while, it was my choice. I'm not a victim. I chose this. This is all I'm good at. He's been there when nobody else was. The game is all I know. He wasn't that bad. I can't be a square. Does any of these quotes sound familiar with the victims that we work with? I see a lot of heads nodding, yes. That last one, he wasn't that bad, is actually my quote. After being in human trafficking for almost a year, about 10 and a half months, experiencing every form of what we're learning is that there's something internal that happens once you learn how to survive in this world and then thrive in this world and it becomes part of your identity, we have to take a different approach for rehabilitation. It's, not, it's no longer about getting you, pulling you out of a situation physically because if you're still there mentally and psychologically, you're going to find a way back. As Steve has said, identity disturbance can happen due to prolonged and intense coercive persuasion. Coercive persuasion is coercion, manipulation. And the results are changes in or conscious questioning of one's identity. Result is changes in or conscious questioning of one's identity. Identity, those core deep beliefs about who I am, what do I believe about the world, what do I believe about myself, about other people. So that's an example of how this strategy of manipulation works. Tearing someone's ego down to nothing, introducing them to a new way of thinking, building them back up according to this new way of thinking. That line that resonates so much with my experience is the, matter. even when we were writing the curriculum, we wanted to know what those main psychological beliefs that were implanted as a result of commercial sexual exploitation were so that we knew what we're targeting, what we're fighting against. And they're all hinged on what we've come up with as the top three core identity beliefs that anyone who's ever lived in commercial sexual exploitation has at least heard, but probably believes. Top three. One, it's better to get paid for sex than to do it for free. Two, squares are losers. Let's look at some indicators, some symptoms that the clients you serve are experiencing identity disturbance, identity alteration, having an alter ego. I don't know anybody that was in any form of the sex industry that used their real name. You just don't Nightmares, do that. Eating disorders, drug and alcohol use. This looks a lot like PTSD. It looks a lot like trauma. It is trauma. And there's an added component of it the identity piece. And as it's identified in the DSM under a dissociative disorder, the way I conceptualize it is there's so much trauma involved in the commercial sexual exploitation that if I am present, seeing it, hearing it, feeling it, smelling it, if I have all my senses engaged and I'm in this moment, in this life, it's overload. So I'm gonna dissociate but what's gonna step in as I'm dissociated in somewhere else is this other identity. One that can not only survive, but thrive in this world. Oftentimes we're trying to treat these other symptoms, alcoholism, all these other symptoms, when at the core of it, it could be their beliefs about themselves and trying to quiet or numb a lot of this identity disturbance that they're grappling with. It's a horrible place to be one foot in and one foot out. Knowing something is so devastatingly damaging to you and you can't look at yourself in the mirror, but part of you feels that that's who you are, where you belong, and that you signed up for it. So as we transition into our engagement section, I want you to keep this image in mind. Think about the clients that you serve. Think about after that first arrest, if someone was able to see the inside, not her external actions and attitude, to help her understand and kind of decode this path that she's on, why she has loving feelings toward the trafficker. Help with therapy to understand that being sexually abused as a child does not mean that you were chosen to now be a commercial sex trafficking victim. Some type of intervention where she could see herself as a strong survivor, not one to be 
shamed, think about the path that we can take to help them on their journey out. Mm -hmm.